welcome back to another episode of Short and Sweet. I am Corey Kukru along with Heather Atwood. How are you, Heather? I'm good, Corey. How are you? Great. Good. Excited to do episode number five now. We have a very special guest today. It is yeah. Rebecca Doyon of Hello. Sweet Reeves Heavenly Dessert Company. Good morning. Good morning. Very happy to be here with both of you. Today. Yeah, this is awesome. Th- thanks for joining us. Absolutely. This is great. Okay, Rebecca. So we kind of want to get the A to Z on Sweet Reeves, who you are, what you do, how this all came about. Okay. So it's a good story. It's a little bit of a long story. It's been a journey. It's been a good journey. Um, when I was uh, bartending at the Rudder many moons ago, my executive chef at the time, Chris Wheeler, um, he and I somewhat collaborated on our dessert menu at the time, and he felt that there were some things lacking with the dessert menu, and he asked me if I would take a look at it and and kind of come up with some ideas because he knew that I had a passion for baking, and I just at the time was baking for my own, you know, satisfaction at home for my kids. And I thought you were going to say because you're a bartender, can you <laughs> collaborate on these desserts? I thought that was very, a really interesting angle. Yeah, so it's he good knew to know that, that I was passionate about. Like, I love to bake. He knows I love food. Um, I'm working in the food industry, and so he said, "Hey, take a look. What do you think?" And I pointed out to him that we're we're missing a citrus. We've got the chocolate covered and we've got the fruit but we're miss- missing a citrus and he said well do you have a recommendation and I said I would put I said I have this great recipe for a frozen key lime pie and I would put that on the menu and he said okay great would you be willing to do it and I was shocked and I said for the restaurant and he said yeah can you do that for us and I said well all right so I was super nervous because I had never baked for anybody other than you know my family before mm. um, so I started off working uh, in the kitchen at the rudder um, with this assembly line of uh, you know 15 to 16 frozen key lime pies and I would go in and I would produce those in the kitchen and then I'd change up and get ready and, and do my my shift that night so after doing that for a couple of years, um, and we brought in other desserts at the time, once he realized you know, that this was running well, he said, well, why don't you take over and just kind of do, if you can do two desserts for me, two to three desserts for me, um, and just kind of run what you want and experiment and play and get our customers' reaction. So he really provided me with a platform to... Um, to learn mm. and to uh, to play with different flavors and different styles of desserts and present them to our customers and get their feedback, which was wonderful. Um, that was a real platform for me that um, that grew and that I was super thankful for. And that's kind of where I've I've come from and how my business journey began. So, how did those first frozen key lime pies? How were they received? Very well. (laughs) It was the signature dessert. It kind of became, it's a seasonal dessert, so I would only run it from like May through September. So there was, um, you know, we used to call it, you know, frozen key lime pie season. Whenever we were going back into the summer season, we were opening up the seasonal restaurant. I would always post online, guess what time it is? It's key lime pie season. And there was a lot of anticipation for that particular dessert. It was something different that was on the menu. It's a frozen dessert. It's meant to be served frozen, um, but it's different than your regular kind of scoop of ice cream. So um, it definitely became a, a, um, a favorite with our customers at the time. And what's great is not only are we going to be looking at today's podcast, we'll be looking at your signature key lime pies later. You brought a couple for I us. Did. They look gorgeous, so we can't wait to Thank share you. those sites with you, and then Heather and I can test that for you for the benefit Very of the good. Yeah. that we test this. Absolutely. Yeah, we, exactly. So, yeah, we'll get back to it. So, I, I don't know, where did the passion for baking be, begin? Honestly, I think a lot of it comes from my mom when mm. I was growing up. she was. And where a, did you grow up? I grew up, I grew up in Essex Junction, Vermont. And I know it well. Yes, yeah, yeah. so that's that's my home. And I moved to Massachusetts in 97. I had just graduated from college with a degree in secondary education. I was starting my, my first career job uh, as a high school teacher. Mm. And that's how I randomly ended up in Gloucester. I was working at Hamilton Wenham at the time, but I found my first apartment here in Gloucester. And what were you teaching in high school? I was teaching business. I was a business teacher. So I was teaching business courses. And, um, but I always maintained my passion for you know, cooking and baking and kind of being in the kitchen. And that's kind of how I grew up with my mom in the kitchen. And she um, was a baker herself. 
a uh, home Interesting. baker. So what did she, what sort of things did she bake? And, and I think of Vermont as being a state, in fact, that really loves baking. Yes, right? I would absolutely agree with that. Yeah, I would. There's some yeah. kind of, something about the culture up there. The, well, everything, there's a, there's a lot of um, homemade goods in Vermont. People in Vermont um, really know how to live off of what they have in front of them. The, you know, obviously all That's the farms, we've got, you know, cabbage, you know, uh, cabbage cheese. We've got, you know, all the dairy farms. We have all the, the fruit orchards. And I feel that people in Vermont really know how to live and live well off of what they can manufacture and produce and for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they really oh, they value they it. And they very much yeah. value it. Yeah. It's it's very much part of their lifestyle. Right. Um, it's just kind of, I think, who who they are. We literally just got syrup from our friends in Vermont syrup. who just tapped yes. within the last month or so. And you'll notice mm -hmm. today that the ice cream that I put on top of my other uh, dessert that I brought in, the Brookie, of course, yes. is Ben & Jerry's because there to. is no other. Right. 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 This yeah. is true. It's, <laughs> and that is so, yeah. culture. So it's produced. ingrained yeah. in my, right? Yeah. right? And so my mom, you know, in introduced, of course, you know, growing up and I uh, have a, a sibling and it was in, in the kitchen and teaching us how to bake a lot of just the traditional, you know, cookies and pies and um, all the homemade, um, all the homemade goodies that she used to make. Mm. And now you're involved in this program at Endicott College, right? Yes, I am. So you're teaching. You're back to teaching. Yes. But not business. Yes. So I'm back to teaching, um, which has been fabulous for me. Um, I'm a pastry instructor at Endicott College in their Misslewood uh, building for the La Chantal program. Um, we're a hospitality program, and so I get to go in every week, and I'm working with students, and I'm working with sugar, and it's like two <laughs> favorite things to do. So it couldn't have been a better fit for me um, to be to be working again with a group of young adults who are there to learn and enjoy learning um, about food production and all that goes into the hospitality industry. So it's a real pleasure for me to be able to do that again. But it's actual technique. You're teaching Absolutely. them how to do pie crusts and, and custards and things like that? We are, yes. Yeah. So we're not a culinary program. We're a hospitality program. And the the um, purpose of, of uh, them working in, in a restaurant is it's a working classroom. And um, the idea is, obviously, at some point, their goal is to be managing um, you know, in hotels and, and restaurants, et cetera. So they need to know how to do all the jobs that are involved um, front of the house, back of the house, uh, in the dish pit, and all of those really important mm. things. Um, but yes, you also should have some culinary experience. Mm -hmm. um, you should know some basics, um, how to put together um, a meal, how to put together um, flavors, how to work kitchen equipment. So we do teach all of that. So when they come out of this program, um, some of us, some of students walk in and they, they don't necessarily have any experience and some walk in and they've already been working in the industry and they do have some experience. So we're starting with ground level. We're teaching them how to hold a knife. We're teaching them um, how to chop vegetables. We're teaching them how to deal with their waste and how to be um, responsible for all of the things that are involved. So, and I'm sure costs too. And I'm sure Absolutely. you have to. Uh, you, well, tell us more about the Sweet Reeves business. Sure. So uh, that came from, um, like I said, from my days working um, from the rudder, and then I got to a point when I realized, as my children were getting older, that um, I want to look into doing this kind of on my own, for my own. So I went to the city and I did all the um, things I needed to do to get certified through the city and take the courses that were necessary to be um, certified. And now I bake. Um, from my own kitchen. I've been in there. Yeah. It's awesome. Do you want to yeah. pause for just a little bit? Because I bet some of our listeners are interested in how, what that process of getting certified is. Sure. Oh, is it complicated? Yeah. No, is it's it... not complicated at okay. all. And I, I remember being very nervous and feeling like, I don't know, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? And um, the health department, um, Rosalina Castro has been the health uh, inspector that I've been working with. She's wonderful. And she makes it um, very, the, she makes the process very simple. Um, not intimidating at all. Obviously, you know, the requirements are laid out and you need to follow, you know, you, you need to make sure that, um, you know, for example, because I work from home and I have three children and I also have two dogs, when I am baking from home, all of those things are removed and there is a, a space that no one is allowed inside of that area when I'm baking. I also have um, a separate space for 
uh, my baking ingredients that are not crossed at all with whatever I may be baking for dinner that night. Um, so as long as you are, are capable of having a certain space that meets the, the health requirements, it's, it's clean, it's ordered, it's dated, um, and you're aware of all of those health-related uh, concerns in the, the industry, it's a relatively simple process. That's good to know. It's yeah, good because it's, people can be doing this. You really can. Yeah. This is um, this is something that I, like I said, I, I feel like I always say I fell into it, but I, I think in hindsight, there was a lot that led up to it that I worked towards and just didn't realize that, you know, one opportunity led to another opportunity. And when you're given an opportunity, take it. Yeah. And it's kind of led to where I am today. Um, but yeah. the, the, the process itself was not complicated. And now, so the Sweet Reeves Heavenly Dessert Company. So you're providing craft desserts to yes. restaurants and... Yes. Yeah. So I provide um, small batch made from scratch. Um, I'm always willing to work with a restaurant if they want something specific. Um, I've offered everything from, uh, you know, the kind of classic deep, di di deep dish cookies, um, the frozen key lime pie, um, um, flans, anything along those lines I've done in the past. Mm -hmm. And I, like I said, it, um, I have my, my signature desserts right now. I've got the frozen key lime pie with a vanilla coconut crust. I have the, the brookie, which is a cross between um, a blondie and uh, a pecan pie, and we'll get to that. But the flavor combination there is um, very reminiscent of a pecan pie. And then I also have a dark chocolate peanut butter lava cake that's also been a staple dark of chocolate peanut, peanut butter, butter, butter lava cake. Yeah. oh my gosh out of control yeah out of control <laughs> and, <laughs> totally. and that's been a hit for a while and it's it's still um right now um uh chef chris wheeler is running it at the uh, mile marker oh nice yeah cool wow. i was yeah. going to say what what where can we find so research? you'll find the chocolate peanut butter lava cake currently at the mile marker restaurant um, the brookie, the deep dish brookie, has been on the Franklin's menu for mm -hmm. a couple of years. Yeah, well, um, the frozen oh, key lime pie that. will go into both of those restaurants in addition to um, this year I'm, I'm branching out a little bit into retail and it will be featured in the frozen section at Marshall's Farm Stand. That's great. The key lime pie? The frozen key lime oh, pie. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh, that is really great to yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. This will this will be a new a new journey for me. I haven't gone into retail yet, so I've been working um, with Bob Marshall, and it will be there starting in May. Yeah, we'll might, bring him in sometime and talk yes, about it. We will. <laughs> this might be my hey. favorite local food. <laughs> Mine too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the the frozen key lime pie is that one dessert that I just never get tired of. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's just good. <laughs> so when you're naming these desserts, yeah. what's that process like? Uh, you know, the Brookie is the only one, um, that I named kind of after my daughter's name is Brooke. Mm -hmm. And because it's a, a blonde brownie with a cookie, I was like, I'm just going to call it the Brookie yeah. because it seemed <laughs> to make that. sense yeah. to me. Yeah. Um, the frozen key lime pie, obviously the, the word frozen is an important part of the dessert description. Um, that it's not a traditional key lime pie in the sense that you can't take it out and, and let it sit and then expect to serve it. You'll be Which is serving, why it's not sitting Which right is there why right it's now. not yeah. sitting here now. It's set up yeah. for you in the freezer. Um, the chocolate peanut butter lava cake is what that is. Um, I do provide all of my restaurants with, when they order a dessert, they do get a description of the dessert so that they can talk to their servers when you're um, you know, at your table and you're announcing what the dessert is. This is how you can describe it. Um, and they also get some samples too so that their staff can, they know what they're serving. Yeah, and now are you they also, do that. you participate in <laughs> vending events? Like I've seen you over Magnolia Library before. So do you I venture out I, I have not ventured out into that yet. Um, I was toying with the idea of getting involved with farmer's market, but it's a completely different setup. I have to be very specific. Um, you know, the food is um, already prepared and there's handling requirements right. for the city. And I just have to make sure that, especially with the frozen and dessert. And labeling and things like that. Labeling, mm -hmm. yes. All of that becomes uh, a little bit of a different animal than what I've done in the past. But um, like I said, branching into this retail market right now will probably be a good first step into that, mm -hmm. and we'll see where it leads. Yeah, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a really important question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lemon or ginger? Lemon. 
I think you kind of answered this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I think you answered this one, but I'm going to ask anyway yeah. because my daughter wanted. She to said know. lemon with a redhead in the room. Can't <laughs> right? believe it. Right? Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Fail. Well, she, yeah. she, knows how, she knows where my sentiments lie. Yeah. I think, maybe. So, and then there's this the frozen key lime pie. So sorry, Corey. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. blondie or brownie? Brownie. Oh, chocolate. You, Right, right. Yeah. Okay, so here's my next question to go along with that: yeah. funfetti or chocolate ganache? Oh, chocolate ganache. Okay, all right. Yeah, I, me too. I mean, funfetti, I, I don't understand. I don't get it either. <laughs> I mean, I like like, you know, here in Gloucester, we call them jimmies, but I grew up calling them sprinkles. Yeah. Right, yeah. So right. the sprinkles. Yeah. yeah. I want them on my ice cream. I don't I want know. them in my cake. I know. I don't understand that. Kids love it. Great. They do. Yes. I know. And it's beautiful. I love a cake that's been decorated with the rainbow. Jimmy's, yeah. but yeah, I don't know. I haven't fallen for that no, cake yet. I never I hear funfetti. Either. You you never hear it funfetti. It makes sense, but no. Yeah. 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 Jimmy's or sprinkles. It was always Jimmy's here. Yeah. 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 Okay, so um, one more. Yeah. Macaron or whoopie pies. Whoopie pies. Yeah. Ooh. Me too. And well, I the have soft the best macaron is awesome. Huh? The soft ones are awesome. Yes. The macaron, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't had a soft one. Oh yeah, they exist. Oh. But whoopie pies. The whoopie pies are yeah, great. But whoopie... chocolate. See, we're getting back to the, right, cho- the chocolate. Right, the chocolate. I know, I agree. It's the chocolate and, and, yeah. And all those flavors in the macaron, I'm just, I, I'm, I take one bite and I'm like, okay, it's a little perfumey. Yes. And it just... can be, yes. And I'm, that's just not my particular style, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you have favorite desserts? Um, Aside my, from what you're baking. So my favorite dessert, when I get a, a, a craving just to bake at home for myself mm. or, or for Which I'm sure you have family. that craving all the time. Not <laughs> so much anymore, which is interesting because that's, you know, considering Ow. that's where this this came from was my, I used to bake all the time when my kids were little. I would bake like six dozen cookies and be like, who wants cookies? Because that's what I felt like doing today <laughs> is baking. Now I do very little baking for my, myself and my, like I said, much to my kids' dismay. Mm. But when I... Um, want and have a craving for something sweet i always go back to just the classic chocolate chip cookie Mm. yep or that or a box of brownies which i know is like sacrilegious considering i'm a baker i won't make them from scratch no i want that like duncan duncan hines Hines mix yeah Yeah, right that's what i grew up on yeah and when i right and i'm like i want the ice cream sundae and i want that yeah yeah i agree Mm -hmm. i agree with that so um how about a few tips for our local home cooks do you have any? And, and I'm while, thinking. And while you're doing that, why not? Noah, can yeah. you bring the desserts out so we can start showing them? Because like, definitely. Yeah, we. Yeah. It's time for people to see. I think what's so happening. too. Yeah, um, and I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, particularly that lava cake. Yeah. What What's the secret to getting that right? Um, the t- the temperature of your oven is crucial. Hot, right? Uh, no, you want to yeah. bake them. Well, yes, hot. About Starts out degrees. hot. Starts right, but then my trick is, is you. I've got You got to keep rotating those pans, because uh. the trick to the lava cake. A lot of people don't understand that the lava cake is meant to be baked underdone, but you've got to hit that point where it's done enough around the edges and the bottom that it's set, so that right. you can get it out of your pan. Right. Right. But not done enough, so that you still have that molten. Lava center. That's what that is. Is is um, is the batter that hasn't cooked yet? Cooked right. all the way through. Yeah. Right. Um, so if you're gonna do a lava cake, um, I find that a lot of recipes are, if you follow the recipe specific to the instructions, you really can't mess up. Yeah. Baking yeah. is a science. Pay attention to your measurements. If it calls for a half a teaspoon, a level half a teaspoon, and don't don't guess it. Like if you've got a kitchen scale. Um, use it. If you don't have a kitchen scale, they're easy to get, and I highly suggest getting one because when it comes to baking, which is very different than than cooking, you do want to use very s- specific measurements. So do you weigh time. your ingredients? I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. It does. Yeah, you because really... then you're, you're shooting for accuracy, especially when you're in the business and your, your customer and your customer's customers expect that product to be the same every single time. Mm. You, you need that accuracy and you need the assurance. You know, right. it's my name on the dessert. So, yes, I definitely invest in a, in a good kitchen scale. Right. Heather. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about what we have here. So the one in the front, the one that you're touching now, that's, yes. that's the brookie. Oh, um, did yeah. I move these so that – are these still good for you guys? Okay. 
Um, it's a deep dish cookie. Um, it's a cross between, like I said, a blondie and a, and a brownie. And this was created because I had a customer come to me and say, I need a dessert that doesn't have any chocolate in it. And I that one stumped me because I thought, oh, who wants a dessert with <laughs> chocolate? <laughs> it, right? So this particular deep dish cookie is loaded with uh, brown butter, brown sugar, um, toasted pecans, and coconut. Mm. And it's served warm, so when I bring it to the restaurant, all of my um, desserts are prepared in individual portions so that the restaurant does not have to be proportioning on their oh, own. Interesting. Um, everything is brought in disposable um, wares so that nothing is returned to me. Everything is recycled. Excellent. Yeah. Yep. Um, and all they have to do is rewarm it and garnish it however they prefer. I always give my recommendation, like this is how, these are some examples of how you can garnish it. Today I've got it garnished with some um, ice cream, vanilla ice cream, and uh, just a swirl of chocolate sauce, but a traditional, I know the Franklin garnish is theirs with um, the caramel sauce, which is a perfect pairing for this particular cookie because it's got Mm. that that brown sugar in it. So that's kind of like a pecan pie. And then the one um, on my left, that is the the frozen key lime pie with the vanilla coconut crust. And that's just simple to garnish with some whipped cream, a little lime. Um, Color is good, a raspberry, some mint. Um, You could toast up some coconut, put some toasted coconut, sprinkle that on top or on the plate, seeing how the coconut is in the crust. So tell me about that crust. It's coconut, toasted coconut, and vanilla, you said. Is there anything else binding that together? It's butter. Oh, nice. Butter. Nice. Yep. So it's kind of like a traditional graham cracker crust, but minus the graham cracker right. sub-vanilla cookie. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> really. I mean, it's very simple. But, um, and that was my It's very that pretty, was my too. Take. I love how sort of it's You know, you like eat a... with your eyes first. Mm-hmm. You really do. So, you know, when you're presenting, this has always kind of been my my uh, shtick with the with the restaurants is plating uh, matters. And I work, you know, the restaurants that I work with, know that right and their plating is beautiful um regardless but yeah you customers when when you bring that to their table you want them to look at that and go wow that i can't wait to get into that that's the reaction you want that's my reaction yeah. <laughs> how, how do you feel Corey? it's just such a cool story i mean so because yeah. i want to ask you like why you love what you do but i just think it's cool when you end up at a place in life like where you're supposed to be and you yes. have a passion for teaching and a passion yes. for baking so yes. here you are now you know fulfilling Yes. I'm assuming fulfilling a, a lifelong dream. It's very satisfying. It's satisfying, and a lot of times, you know, it, that cliche s- is saying about like when you find a, a, a job or a career and you can't believe that you get paid to do it. Mm. it. And it sounds cliche, but it's true. There's so many times that I go, I this is how I'm earning my living, and how blessed am I that I'm doing something that's kind of been ingrained in me from childhood and now it's carried into an adulthood and I'm, I'm working with children and I'm working, well not children at that, they're young adults, um, and I'm also working with sugar. I mean, it's the best of both worlds You're for right. me. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you hope it happens next? With sweet ribs. So I really want to um, look more into going more into retail mm. and really hoping that we can. Um, I've just reworked my my logo and my branding a little bit. So if you follow me on Facebook, I am on Facebook, um, Sweet Ribs Heavenly Desserts uh, Company. That is on Facebook. I don't have a website yet. I haven't um, kind of branched out into that, but there may be a need for that mm-hmm. um, should this continue to grow the way that it has been, and I hope that it does. Yeah, there are cool, easy websites where it, because you're, the photos you have, like when the yeah. presentation is awesome, these are yeah. gorgeous, and you yeah. have awesome photos. Heather and I have been beautiful. talking about it for a couple yeah. of days now. Right. Yeah. Easy, like do it yourself sites yeah. that would just like, I would probably do, should your, do that, yeah. your desserts justice. Yeah. You know? And I've had a couple of, um, I do have a couple of contacts also that have offered who are into food photography and have offered to help. So I feel like those things are starting to line themselves up. And again, like I said, when when life kind of hands you an opportunity, you need to take it. When life hands you lemons, you take the ginger. You <laughs> <laughs> and you turn it into some kind of a pie. Exactly. <laughs> right, Heather, we need to get into this. Yes. Well, I think we do. I'm Actually, it's torturing me right now. Is it really? So, yeah. Are you so, a, so are you a sweets freak? I, no, I am not. I But a really good one, I am. I mean, when I, uh, it has to be a really beautiful dessert. And oh, really? I, yeah, it does. And I then I love it. And yeah. I also love 
sweets not after dinner. I like them around 11 o'clock in the morning, which is yeah. right about now, yeah. right? Really? Or Good 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Because I want to really enjoy it. And if I've had a big dinner, it's like that big dessert afterwards is not quite as satisfying. Yes. Mm. So this is my moment. Yes. Dessert for breakfast. Folks. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. We want, if you we want to take something away from this. Today, <laughs> exactly. It's, you're okay to do that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, let's try this now. And then um, I have a couple more questions for Reba, too. Okay. Um, but, Okay, then I'm going to grab a fork. You, you talk. Go nuts. Yeah, you go nuts. <laughs> you you go try ahead, whatever you want to try. Okay. Um, I just think it's... I'm going to start with a signature. Sure. Do you want to try different things baking? Or do you... Because I know, like, you pride yourself on consistency. You mm-hmm. need to be consistent for mm-hmm. the restaurants. Mm-hmm. You know, your name is on the label. Um, but, like, when does the experimentation mm-hmm. start? Or do you think, hey, let's try this? And, and what is that process like? You know, you know they're just... I can see like broken wooden spoons all over the house <laughs> until you get something right. Or... So if you've been on my Facebook page, you've probably seen pictures of that experimentation process. Yeah. <laughs> so if you haven't, take a look. Um, I, I like to experiment with different flavors. I like to bring in um, cooking a lot with um, alcohol because it brings in a completely different surprise element. I know why we're friends. Really, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the and, bartender in yeah. her. Yeah. Right. So right? keeping in mind that I'm kind of blending like everywhere that which I've been. Which are also and flavors. I was a bartender, yeah, which right. are flavors. Yeah. So, you know, I want to take that, that whiskey and I want to, um, you know, I want to reduce that down and I want to throw that into a homemade caramel sauce mm. and then serve that over a deep dish cookie, um, which I've done before with the brookie. Um and some other the other deep dish um, cookies that I've done before. Um, the other thing you might want a knife for that one. Yeah, I think we might need that. Yeah, freezer, so exactly. now it's, it's we'll, a little we'll harder. Figure that one out. Um, but the other right. great <laughs> thing to bring back uh, to Endicott College and my my wow. um, experience in in that kitchen is, um, you know, we want to keep things interesting for our repeat customers as well. And so I do have another platform where I'm able to. Uh, experiment with flavors mm. there mm-hmm. in collaborating um, with uh, my chef in, in, the, in our kitchen there and say, okay, what would work good with what he's putting on the menu, mm-hmm. um, you know, for the fall semester? And I want to start, I want to bring in uh, a pumpkin and I want to bring in um, any, an apple variety. And I really am finding that that's been a great platform for me to really play with flavors and, and different desserts specifically in that kitchen. When I'm working out of my own kitchen from home, because I am a, a home-based business, there are some restrictions um, that I do need to follow from the health department. Should I get to a point where I'm um, working uh, in a commercial kitchen all the time? Uh, currently, I am um, actually going into a commercial kitchen for the summer for the sake of the, the frozen key lime pie because I'm oh, generating so many more this summer than I have that I felt like I needed this space. Mm. Um, Everything else I still can do from home. But if I get to a point where I do have my own commercial kitchen that will open up more opportunities to do developing different um, custards uh, and desserts that I can prepare there because at that point the rules change a little bit for me. Yeah, beautiful. I was just talking actually with some people yesterday about the... um, the struggles this community has mm-hmm. in innovation, basically, because mm-hmm. we don't have a commercial kitchen. Mm-hmm. And so it's hard for a lot of cottage industries to really begin yes. to expand and grow yes. because of that, right? I would absolutely agree with that. That's been a tough one for me is to how to be producing. Um, you know, my motto, of course, is, you know, small batch homemade. Um, but, you know, with the pies, for example, I'll make 200 a day. And yeah. when I set up shop in my kitchen, I set up shop. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> and, right. you know, and it it really is um, quite a process from start to finish. If I had a place um, where I didn't have to go in and uh, set up all my tables and drag in all my, you know, it, it would um, expedite and make my process that much more simple. Right. Um, right. So, That's yeah. Tough. So do you look at cookbooks for new ideas? Do you look at mm-hmm. magazines, mm-hmm. websites? Mm-hmm. What are some of your favorites? So cookbooks, absolutely, because I love the visual. Mm-hmm. Um, I 
will often, I am a, a big reader, I love to read, that's kind of my downtime, but um, oftentimes at night when I am decompressing, instead of reaching for a novel, I'm reaching for the newest cookbook that just came out, mm -hmm. um, or my food, my Bon Appetit that came in today, that's my, I'll sit down and I'm flipping through there, and I'm looking for, I'm searching for new techniques, I'm searching for how they take their flavors and how I can work with those flavors and make them my own. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I do a lot of, um, I follow a lot of bloggers um, and just um, not to, to copy what they're doing, but to to learn mm -hmm. from their process right, that's and what it's about. figure out how to yeah. turn that into my process mm -hmm. and how can I take what they're doing and build on that and turn that into something that becomes uniquely my own. Sure. Any favorites you want to mention? Either bloggers, Bon Appetit. That's uh, Bon Appetit. I follow, um, and then also, um, I think my favorite um, cookbook author in in I guess celebrity chef would be Ina Garten, Barefoot yeah, Contessa, yeah. because for me, she's so much more about um, just um, producing a product. She's very much about the process. And if you're listening to her instructions and reading her recipe, she talks a lot about the process of how to create what she's creating. And that's where the learning is, hmm. for me, anyways. Yep. There's a lot to be learned if you're listening um, to these uh, professional chefs. And even my, uh, my chef at Endicott, um, watching him and, and, um, and listening to his suggestions on how to uh, prepare certain um, uh, entrees there's a lot to be learned this industry really um, changes and and evolves regularly you've got to keep up yeah yeah no, no. for sure Scrolling through like America's top 25 desserts, mm -hmm. sort of getting ready for the show. Yep. And the, I think number 25, but a long a few years ago it was probably number seven, is the helium balloon, the chocolate helium balloon at, um, oh, what's the guy in Chicago? Um, Alinea. Is, you, do you know about this? No. Yeah, he, he, exp he blows up basically uh -huh. chocolate into, with helium. And it's served to you that way. Yeah. He does all kinds really? of crazy things. Yeah. But this is the whole molecular gastronomy yes. um, I side not of things. I've delved into that world no, at nobody, all. <laughs> you have to be, <laughs> you, you really me. have to have a different sort of mind because it's yes. not, it's real, it's hard science. It's mm -hmm. not so much baking. And you, you serve know? that by right. popping? Or what? Yeah, I can't right. remember. I, I um, if it makes your voice squeaky. Yeah, that's you, that's right. <laughs> I mean, they do, he, he does all kinds of crazy things. He wants served, um, this is leaving desserts very quick, briefly, but he served a perfect tomato, fresh tomato, and it was, ser it was sliced on a plate, and it was served to you on a pillow. And as the pillow was set like down, an actual, an actual pillow. pillow, and as it was inflated, okay. it was an inflated pillow. Okay. And as it sits there, it deflates. And the smell of freshly cut grass is the air that comes out of mm -hmm. the pillow. So you're having this experience of eating this, you know, perfect summer tomato along with the smell of freshly cut grass. Yep. That's the kind of thing they do. That's a long way to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, what he's doing is I get, he's playing on their, their the senses. senses. And, and he, that's what I tell my, my students, actually. It's interesting. As I tell them, I said, you know, you don't, when you come into the a kitchen, you need to rely on all your senses, not just the timer on the oven. You know, pay attention to what you smell, pay attention to what you're hearing happening, mm. um, and do a visual check as well. So um, I think that's why I, I, I love this, this uh, industry so much, is it really does play on all your senses. That is and such great advice. Take it so yeah. far. You can do something am amazing like that. Yeah, yeah. You know? Grant Ackett's is that chef's name. But um, but I love that you just said that. I really think that that is great advice yep. because it speaks to the fact that you really can't be distracted. You need all your yes. senses working yep. at one time yes. when you're baking, particularly Absolutely. baking. And I am very guilty of, you know, counting on the timer yeah. and then something's burned. Yeah. 
and instead of just being totally present for yeah. it and aware of the smells yeah. and the sounds. Yes, you can become very like <laughs> zen with your with your baking. That's so. my comfort zone. When I need to like, you know, de stress or whatever, it's like no, mom needs to bake. Mom do you listen to music when you bake? I do. Yeah, what do you listen to? Um, Soundtrack? No, I <laughs> usually put um, a big one for me, for whatever reason, is always Kenny Chesney, and I just put like all of his, uh, and I just, you know, randomly rotate through that. Um, I don't even really know why. I just always seem to gravitate to his his music. Um, You're a Vermont girl. Because I'm yeah, a Vermont exactly. girl. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. he's got that Caribbean vibe to it too so it kind of takes me to another place yeah well you need you kind of need that but you can't have yeah. it too like i find right too yeah distracting. it's just kind of like this mellow stuff going on in the background nice. unless he's talking about his tractor and then i skip <laughs> so there you have it folks rebecca doyon of sweet reeves heavenly dessert company thanks so much for joining thank us thank you back. thank you so much for having me we thank have you. to be it's in your pleasure. kitchen at some point yes and do please. this again absolutely we please and we also we talked about the other senses we still got to get back to taste that yeah. key lime pie is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's awesome. Yeah. It's so good. good that when it's that cold, too. Yeah, I know. And crisp. And, and I've creamy. Had, I've had Talk about before. textural, sensu sensual, yeah. sensory thing. Yeah. yeah. It's so really creamy. It's yeah. it's not, like, when I think of a frozen custard pie, I think that it's going to have a little bit of ice in it. Zero. Zero. It okay. is so Thank creamy. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So if you mm. want to try any of Rebecca's desserts, you can go to Mile Market One. You can go to the Franklin. You can go to Endicott. Yep. Right. Come into Endicott and make a reservation. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Or go to her house, like we will be uh, in, the, in the upcoming weeks. <laughs> but and soon, right. Marshall Farms, right? She'll, her yes. Marshall your Farms pies thing. will be at Marshall Farms. Mar yeah. Right. The frozen yeah. key lime pie will be at. Um, he opens Memorial Day weekend, so the pie will be there. Oh, I'm going to get him Great. in here right now. Yeah. Okay. Can we do that? Yeah, we can. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Rebecca. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much. It was Thank really you. great. Thank you.